Peter Tinsley. He works for uh, Dorset Wildlife Trust and he's managed to get some um, side scan imagery of where the um, cruise ships have been anchoring in the Dorset coast. Okay. Okay. Is that working? Can you see that? Yep. Maps. Maps. Okay. So, um, yeah, you, you can't have missed this invasion. Um, I know at one point, I think I counted 23 cruise ships in the channel and 15 of those were moored up along the, the south coast. So they, you know, they, they tend to huddle in Tor Bay, Weymouth Bay and in Pool Bay. Um, and I managed to get some funding from Natural England at the end of last year to uh, do a, a bit of seabed survey work around um, some of these ships. I mean, I had a small amount of funding, so we were able to do three kilometre squares of multi-beam in Weymouth Bay and one kilometre square of side scan in Pool Bay. Um, so it's not much, but um, it, it, was, it was helpful. The multi-beam I haven't got back yet. I'm hoping to get that next week. Um, but we did get the side scan back um, this week, so I've had a chance to have a, a quick look at it. Um, so obviously, we had to work out where to put this one kilometre square. Um, so I've been tracking um, the, the position of these cruise ships using Vessel Finder, and this is a composite image of um, hourly screen grabs from Vessel Finder between October and December. So it, it shows you where, um, you know, where, where the clusters of anchoring are. And some, you know, some of these ships will stay in one place for a long time um, and then they'll head off out to sea often in stormy weather and come back in either in the same place or somewhere different. Um, now, you tend to think of Pool Bay as this kind of large expanse of, of you know, fairly mobile sediment and, and relatively featureless, but it's, it's not entirely featureless. I don't know if you remember the oil exploration in Pool Bay a couple of years ago. And if you look at the, the survey report from their environmental survey, just in the southeast corner of the site that they looked at, they found um, some quite nice Sabalaria reefs. Um, you know, so there's, there's some images from, from their report. Um, and if you look at where these reefs have been mapped against features visible on the seabed from multi-beam, you can see that they are associated with um, the, this sort of structure on the seabed. And it, although their survey ended abruptly here, it's quite likely that that um, association continues and there may well be subalaria reef all the way along that structure. And that, that's two kilometers or more, so it's, it's quite a significant feature. But if you put that over that previous map of where the boats are, you can see that um, that lies within one of these areas um, of anchoring. So that's where we decided to, um, to do the side scan. And that was carried out in the beginning of January, the first week of January this year. Now you won't be able to see a, a huge amount on this and it's not very easy to, to show it, but um, on the on the right, I've overlain the um, image from the uh, the oil exploration work, and you can see these patches where they found high density sable area do kind of match up with um, some visible structures in the the recent size scan. But the most significant thing you can see is this big scar on the seabed. If you look at that a little bit more closely. So there's a, a scar here that's it's about five meters wide, about 200 meters long. Um, and it's a it's less than 100 meters away from this, this kind of band of dark. Here is pretty much where the, um, the previous survey found high, high density Sable area reef. So it, this is a, almost certainly Sable area and, and much of these other patches around here may well be as well, but we haven't got any recent ground truthing. Um, but you can see this quite significant mark here. And the other thing we know about this, um, again from the, the Vessel Finder records, that the, the ship that was anchoring here, which was the Anthem of the Seas, um, it left that site on the 16th of October. 
Um, so there's 80 days between um, this scar being made and the, the survey that, that shows it. So it, it's obviously quite persistent. Um, and just to put that into context, that's the data from the uh, wave boy in, in Pool Bay. So they, it's not, we haven't had massive storms, but it's not been a particularly quiet winter either. So um, that's, that's quite a significant scar and it, it seems to be uh, re relatively durable as well. So it'd be interesting to see um, how long it's visible for. And it would also be interesting to have a look at the um, possible further extent of those reefs. Um, I ran through that fairly quickly as I'm aware we are getting a little bit late, but that's that's it really. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Peter. And again, you see it, the importance of the three-dimensional nature of the seabeds, obviously brought up in that point as well. So I think there's obviously a task for some sea search diving there this summer. <laughs> yeah, that would be great.